So in the first part of uh, integration area under the curve, we have learned that um, how do we calculate the area under the curve of any function that's been given to you. So like I said in the first part of my video that we are going to cover two different problems related to the same question and you will be analyzing by yourself that how we are going to cope up with different kind of situation while we are dealing with in area under the curve for any, any given function. So this problem, I'm going to read it. It says find the area between the x axis and the curve y is equal to 4x minus x squared. So the most important thing that you really need to understand is that while when we are finding area under the curve for any function, it means that we are talking about the definite integral. And definite integral are one of those integral in which the limits of integration have been given to you, right? So like in the first question, the limits of integration were being given to you. And over here we can see that y is a function of x where y is equal to 4x minus x squared. So the limit of integration that we need for these kind of questions should be for x like x is equal to maybe something we can say a and then x is equal to b th that is going to be the two limits for you. So the previous in the previous question the limit of integration were been given but over here we do not have the limits of integration. So I am going to give you quickly an overview of how we deal with these type of thing. So the function is 4x minus x squared. Since we are integrating it with respect to x, so I can write dx over here. So there are three things that you really need to do in order to find the area under the curve. So the first thing is that you need to integrate your function uh, with the given limit that you might be having or may where that you are going to find it out. The second thing is that you have to draw or you have to construct the table for the given curve and then with the help of that table you are going to construct the graph and then you are going to shade the region which you were actually looking for. So that's how we do calculate area under the curve. So before I move further for this question, I would really appreciate if you are new to my channel then please do consider subscribing and in the playlist of integration you will be finding 5 to 6 other videos in which I have talked about that what is integration, how we can calculate it, you know, why we need the constant of integration and so many other things. So I would definitely encourage you to please go the playlist of integration and watch all those videos first. Okay, so over here, the first problem that we are having is that we do not have the limits of integration over here. So how we are going to calculate it? You know, there is something hidden given in the questions and we are going to read it and maybe with the help of that we could able to find out it says find the area between the x-axis and the curve y equals to 4x minus x squared. Once it says x-axis, it means that your y is basically going to be 0. Have you ever studied about uh, x-intercept and y-intercept? If not, then I am going to explain it for you. You know, let's suppose on, um, on a general note, here is your xy plane. Okay, I am drawing a curve, uh, a random line over here. Let's say this is the line that I have drawn for you guys in my xy plane. So this is the x-intercept and that's the y-intercept. So what does it really mean by that x-intercept and y-intercept? X-intercept basically defines that where your line cuts the x-axis. That's actually the x-intercept. And y-intercept means that where your line cuts the y-axis at which point? On which point your line cuts the y-axis that's called y-intercept and where your line cuts the x-axis it's called x-intercept and how do we usually get the x-intercept or y-intercept so in order to get the x-intercept we are going to put y is equals to 0 and in order to get the y-intercept we are going to plug in x is equals to 0 so this is the main uh, thing or this is the main theme behind this whole thing that how we are going to find out the limits of integration. So when it says find the area between the x-axis, okay, between the x-axis, it means we don't need the y-axis. So what we are going to do is that we will be putting y is equals to 0. So we know that it's a quadratic equation because the power of x is basically 2. That's how we define that it's a second order polynomial. So if you put y is equals to 0, you will be getting the two different values for x. Okay, let's see what are the those two values. 
Okay, so 4x minus x square would be equal to 0. You can take x common. So it would be 4 minus x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 4 are the two values. And we know that in the limits of integration, uh, this 0 is basically the lower limit and this 4 is going to be the upper limit. So we can write 0 over here and 4 over here. So we are going to integrate this function uh, on this on these limits of integration like from 0 to 4. Okay, on a meanwhile, uh, I'm giving you a minute to think about it how we are going to solve this integration on a meanwhile I can see whether the video is working fine or not. Okay, yeah, it does work fine. Okay, so now we can separate the integration 4x dx from 0 to 4 minus 0 to 4 x square dx right okay so if we integrate it it would be 4 x square over 2 then 4 0 minus x cube over 3 and then 4 0 all right so once we simplify it we will be getting uh, 2x square and the limits of integration were 4 0 minus x cube over 3 over here we have 4 and 0 so now we can plug in the values so 2 uh, 4 square is going to be 16 minus once you put the lower limit 0 it's going to give everything 0 minus so you can take 1 by 3 out now 4 cube is going to be 64 minus once you put 0 so everything will be 0 all right so 16 times 2 is 32 minus 3 uh, 64 over 3 we have over here. So now we can take down the LCM. So 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9 minus 64 over 3. All right. So 96 minus 64 will be giving you make it 66, 76, 86, 90 is 30 and 2. So it would be 32 over 3 square unit. So that's the area under the curve y is equal to 4x minus x squared from 0 to 4. So that's the one thing that uh, we did over here. We have just solved our problem. But that's not the only thing uh, that uh, we were looking for. We have to plot the graph and we have also show, we have to show that this were the area or these were the thing that we were looking for. So I'm trying to be on one side. So if somewhere you are taking a screenshot, if you are noting it down, so you can do it. Then I will gonna erase this part and we will learn how to draw or how to make the graph for y equals to 4x minus uh, x square. Okay, so I can erase this all. And I will be writing over here the answer 32 over 3 square unit. So that's the answer for that. Okay. Now the other thing, if you have watched the first part of uh, area under the curve, I have explained over there there that uh, the, every time when we are having a function y is equal to f of x, where the polynomial is basically of degree 2 so it means that we are always going to get the parabola we are always going to get the parabola like a u shape now you know the coefficient of x square basically defines that whether the parabola or whether the u shape is going to be either on the upward direction or whether it's going to be on a downward direction or either it's going to be on the right hand side like this or either it's going to be on left hand side like this so the sign or the coefficient of uh, x square I would say the sign of x square would basically represent the uh, shape of the parabola okay so we know that the coefficient of x square is over here negative which is minus sign so obviously it's going to be on the uh, bottom hand side okay so I can construct the graph or I mean the table for this so we are going to take our values from 0 to 4 we don't need to take uh, in negative because we don't really need that so once you put 0 what do we get we get 0 everything so in 1 we put 1 
so 4 times 1 is 3 so once we put 2 so 4 times 2 8 minus 2 is 4 2 squared is 4 so 8 minus 4 would really give you 4 okay once you put 3 so 4 times 3 is 12 and 3 squared is 9 so 12 minus 9 will be giving you 3 and once we put uh, 4 so 16 minus 16 is over here we are getting 0 again so that's the table for the graph y equals to 4x minus x is great so now by taking these values I am going to plot the graph okay so this is 0 so 1 2 3 4 so let's say 1 2 3 4 I have taken um, once let's say 1 centimeter and I, I have represented the one point and over here I am also taking okay I can take 1 2 3 and also 4 so once we put 0 we got 0 then I put 1 we got 3 for 1 we got 3 this is a point so for 2 we got 4 so for 2 we got 4 over here and then for 3 we got 3 again this is 3 and 4 we got 0 again so if I join all these point if I join all these point it would be like this so you see I told you that the coefficient of x square is basically going to define that whether the u shape or the parabola that you are having either it's going to be um, on upward side or it's going to be the downward since it was negative so that's why you see the shape is basically the downward so we can now share this region and we can say that this is the area under the curve from the point to 0 to 4 okay so that's it for this question so what we did over here i'm going to keep quickly uh, summarize what we have done so far we have solved two different problems all right and those two problems were related to the topic area under the curve so in in my first problem uh, we have been we we had been given a question and along with its limits of integration okay we we have the curve we did have the curve why i don't know what was the curve but I, I guess it was x squared plus 1 so we have the curve and we, the limits of integration were being given to you we integrated it we draw the table and then we construct the graph and then that, that's how we represent that that's the area under the curve now in this second question it was a little different from the one that we solved earlier so what was the different thing over here we just we were being given only the curve that we have so there are no limits of integration so what we can do we can always find out the limits of integration by reading the question that it says find the area between the x-axis so it means if we are if the examiner is interested in to find us the area under the curve for x-axis it means you have to put y equals to 0 so once you put y equals to 0 it means that you are going to get the different values for x so those different values of x basically is going to define that what is your lower limit and what's your upper limits and then you are going to solve it and then that's how we deal with that so if you are new to my channel then please do consider subscribing this video and uh, subscribing my channel and also share along with you all of your friends and also uh, like this video so that it could help me to reach to more audience